What's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and today Today's a sad day as I as I said in the title and the description and all that stuff She's leaving me She's leaving me for another man, and she's probably never coming back You guys thought I was talking about my wife didn't you? <laughs> uh, no, but gosh, I mean it's it's kind of like losing a piece of me just not quite as important as losing a wife but it's true the uh the old tracker deep v16 1995 model sweet luxurious awesome little boat of mine here that i've had a lot of great times in over the last uh three years or so i've had this boat a little over three years It ain't fighting real hard, but it's a fish. Let's see. Let's see what it is. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's a Dipsy Diver. Uh, he's got Look a dip stick fisherman right there. there. I caught me a little blue one. See that? A, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Just cut it off. I got a fish. Turn the engine off. Oh, that was a hey. it, it got off. It, it got off right at the boat. You saw it. I mean, the pole was buckled over. You saw it. <laughs> What's up? What's going on, man? I need somebody to show me where to catch fish. Oh, man, that's your job. You're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> man, I mean, look at 1995 model. Look at, look at, look at it. Look at this. Does it not look like an almost brand new boat? 1995. Well, I decided to sell it, and I'll tell you the story of why and what we're gonna do and explain everything. But, and then I'll tell you who's buying it. So this, this boat I bought, like I said, three years ago for $4,500. A 1995 Tracker Deep V with a 60 horse Mercury. Awesome little boat. I really like this boat. We've had a, a lot of great memories in this boat. Me and the kids and some other people and even Dutch. Old Dutch got to ride in this boat. So why am I selling it? And what am I gonna do? Because Houston loves the fish. Houston loves the fish so much and I feel really guilty about selling the boat. Well, let me set this camera down and I'll talk to you for a minute. So some of you are gonna say, now Daniel, why in the world would you sell a perfectly good little boat that's paid for? Well, here's the thing. My wife and I made a decision a couple months ago that we're gonna do some, some remodel work, some outdoor work out here and I'll walk you down there and show you what we're gonna do. We've got a, put, been, been working on getting a few contractors to come out and, and do some bids for us on some concrete work and all that. And it's going to cost us about $10,000 to do what we want to do out here. And some of it is just like a patio area, but some of it's a retaining wall that has to be redone because it's just falling apart and we got water issues and all that. Anyways, so we just hate to borrow money. We try to stay as, as low debt as possible so you know we've got one vehicle payment my trucks the only vehicle payment we got we've saved up and paid cash for Weston's my wife's Suburban's paid for we paid it off several years ago um, my tractors paid for every you know the boats paid for everything's pretty much paid for because we just try to stay out of debt so ten thousand dollar bid to do all this concrete work we're sitting here debating you know, we really didn't want to pull $10,000 out of our savings because that's just a big hit on our savings. The boat, I really like the boat, but do we really use it enough as a family to justify keeping it? <sighs> I was torn. So I finally made the decision. We're selling the boat. Actually, we've already sold the boat and we sold our hot tub. So I bought the boat, like I said, for $4,500 over three years ago. And this old boat, I knew it would hold its value well when I bought it. So I thought, I guess I'll just post it on Facebook and start at $4,500. So we put a little bit of money into it. I put some new electronics on it. Got our good Lawrence depth finder. Anyways, so I just put it on, on Facebook and see what happens. Well, within an hour, I sold it. And uh, I didn't sell it for the exact price I bought it for. I, I come off about $300, so $4,200. 
That's not bad after three years taking a $300 cut on it. I think I average $100 a year to use this boat. Sounds great. Anyways, I'm selling it to my, my brother Gary. You guys have seen him several times. Some old, you know, some older videos. We went kayaking together earlier this spring, went fishing. Uh, he went paddle fishing with us. What do y'all think of that? That's sweet. I don't want to throw this, dude. What do you want me to do? One more back? So here's the scenario. Gary Michael's fishing pole is hanging from a tree right there. And he's got to go get it without getting sucked back down the rapids. Uh oh, uh oh, back in the paddle action. Uh, but he's been looking for a boat for a long time. And as soon as I put this up for sale, he, bam, Johnny on the spot was like, I want it. And had several hits on Facebook. So I probably could have actually sold it for more than I bought it for if I'd have held out and just set the price a little higher. But anyways selling the boat and what direction am i going to go after that because you know how much houston and i love to fish emily loves to fish too uh so i'm debating do we gotta go switch gears into that kayak world kayak fishing's really exploding right now and a lot of people are, are fishing from kayaks or some really good fishing kayaks and then i've also thought about something like a the the pelican boats the little pelican two-man or three-man boats with a little small motor on them something that we can just get in the water and do a little catfishing run some jug lines trot lines limb lines things like that because we really don't spend a lot of time on the lake as a family as a whole group it's usually just me and the kids or just me and dj or me and one of the kids or, you know here and there so we don't really need this big boat and i'd much rather use the money take the cash and go pay for our project so what's that concrete project going to be like well, let's walk down here and show you. Actually, we'll start off back here. Phase one of the concrete project was, was here. We came in, the kids have been wanting a good basketball goal, so we did this, I don't know, I guess it's probably been two years ago. Put in concrete up here by the garage, and actually my wife's dad gave us that basketball goal. He was sitting, it was at his place, and he didn't want it anymore. So we got a really nice basketball goal, basketball court for the kids. And a parking area. So once you come off of this basketball court along the side of the garage, my old sidewalk here is just rock. It's just like uh, rock that I picked up out of the creek and came in and just kind of laid in here and put concrete around several years ago with a little railroad tie retaining wall. We're going to tear all this out. We're going to make a concrete sidewalk all the way down the front of the garage here. Just just because it'll be cleaner and safer and neater and less places like this for snakes to hide in. So it'll come down to the front of the garage, a concrete landing, concrete landing, and here's the main project right here. So this area you never see on our channel. This is probably one of the very few times you guys have ever seen this area of our house. I gotta switch arms, my arm's getting tired. I never show this side of our house on YouTube because it's just, it's just embarrassing. It's ugly. So our house is kind of on a hillside here and I'll explain that. You can see it goes up from here. Well, we've got a retaining wall here that was old railroad ties and this is about 30 years old. So it's not in the best shape, but the problem we're having is water is coming off of this hill, flooding over it and flooding this whole area in here. And it makes it kind of useless. There's a little um, concrete porch that comes off of our patio door there. But the main thing is we're gonna tear all this retaining wall out over here and go down and get on the end where it can, you can see it all. So we're gonna tear out all of that retaining wall there. Man, that sun just got bright all of a sudden. Tear all that out and we're gonna back it up. Probably another six or eight feet or so. It'll come back to this tree right here. This tree's gonna have to come out because it's kind of leaning towards the house anyways. That tree will come out and then the retaining wall will shoot across here, if this makes sense, kind of down to where we started over by the garage and tie into that. So we'll have a concrete retaining wall out here that's probably gonna end up being about four or five feet tall by the time we excavate all this dirt and back up. And then the, the cool thing, we're gonna come in here and this will all be concrete. So we're going to go from the house out 
10 or 12 feet. So, what's that gonna do for us? Well, first off, it gets rid of this ugly eyesore. I mean, ugh, it's so ugly and just a muddy mess over here. It'll give us a big patio area where we can come off of the sliding glass doors goes, looks like there's a person standing there. <laughs> Pair of pants drying. But this little patio door is the dining room and then the kitchen's right there. So we'll be able to come right out the dining room door into a little patio area. And my goal is to have a little outdoor cooking area, fire pit, place where I can set up like a permanent propane fish cooker, something like that. Anyways, it'll be good, it'll be awesome. Hopefully we're gonna get started within the next couple weeks. A good friend of mine owns a concrete company and he's gonna come do all the work for us. Tear all this nastiness out and make it all concrete, tie into those steps, go up to the garage, sidewalk down the garage. I think it'll be really, really cool. Oh, and another thing, gotta take another tree out here. This one, this one died on us. It's just a dead, dead tree standing here, right next to the house. I got to get rid of that. Got almost all the limbs cut out. It's basically just the trunk standing up there now. So, anywho, big projects. Gonna miss my boat. Gosh, I'm gonna miss that boat. I mean, I'm a fisherman. Fishermen are supposed to have a boat, especially when you live a mile and a half from the lake. So, on the boat subject, I guess, We'll find something. We'll do something. I don't know. I may may switch over to that kayak world. Man, I watch a lot of kayak fishing on YouTube. Straighten you guys out here. So I watch a lot of kayak fishing on YouTube, and it's a great, inexpensive way to get in the water. Houston's a little bit small to be in his own kayak, so we could either go like a two-person kayak, or maybe I could get a, a good kayak and get him a little small eight or ten footer and just tow him behind me. I don't know. But we'll figure something out. Maybe like a little John boat. I've seen some really cool John boats with eight or 10 horsepower motor on the back. Be perfect for catfishing, like I said, running jug lines and things like that on small water. So I'm sad. It's a sad day. She's leaving me. My baby's leaving me after three years. But here's the, it's not all bad because like I said, Gary, my brother, who just lives a few miles away is buying it so he's borrowed that boat a few times. So I'm thinking, this is like best case scenario. I sold the boat, I have the cash in hand. He's already paid me, he just hasn't come picked up his boat yet. Um, but if I need it, or if I had like a weekend adventure plan with me and the family and wanted to go hang out at a cabin on a lake somewhere, I'd be like, hey Gary, can I borrow your boat? <laughs> so anyways, that's my plan. I don't know, it sounds like a good plan. And uh, we'll figure it out from here. We'll we'll find us something else to put in the water and, and wet a hook with. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just a little game plan rundown of what we're doing. Trying to stay out of debt, trying to keep that debt to a minimum. We don't wanna borrow money. My wife and I hate borrowing money. Try to be as frugal as possible and, and use our money wisely. So between the boat and the hot tub, I mean, we're up to over $7,000 right there, so we don't have to pull near as much money out of savings. Pay for it once, not have all those payments, and be done. Plus, that's two less, thing, two less things I have to pay to maintain, because boat maintenance and hot tub maintenance can get expensive. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope <laughs> Epic fail. Uh, my low battery light was flashing. It's blinking at me. I'm almost through the outro, ending the video. It goes dead. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. It really does help the channel. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below if you have any suggestions on what we should get to put in the water to not, not walk around, to float around and do some fishing. And uh, stick around for a follow up on our new patio and retaining wall area out here. So guys, y'all have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.